The first symptoms that we noticed was, was about a week um, prior to the diagnosis when she became very thirsty continuously. So she had flu-like symptoms. It was February, so we just assumed she had the flu. And then overnight, that night before, um, she was very restless, couldn't sleep. Um, her uh, breathing became fast, and, and, and she seemed to be struggling at times. So we took her to the emergency room the next day, and then that's when we discovered that she had type 1 diabetes. And then his next words were, um, and it's life-threatening at this point, and that quickly woke us up. Emerson was very sick. She was one of the sickest children that I've seen in the past few years. She was in the ICU for two or three days. Her life immediately changed because she started on insulin injections right away, multiple finger pricks daily. Her diet had to change. So, so learning of, of um, the research that goes on at Riley and, and just knowing um, what a great institution it is put us at ease from, from the very beginning. As far as research in Emerson, it goes hand in hand. Diabetes research and diabetes care cannot happen without each other. Research is critical in diabetes um, in a number of different areas um, and uh, important because what we try to do at Riley is we try to take what's been going on in the lab and going on in clinical research and translate it over into care for our patients. Although we've gotten better insulins during the time I've been doing uh, diabetes and although we've gotten better meters in the time I've been doing blood diabetes and we're using pumps now and we're using glucose sensors, um, the overall care, day-to-day -day care for a patient with diabetes has not changed tremendously over the last 15 years. Obviously, injecting insulin daily, multiple times a day, is uh, not really what we consider a cure. Um, and many people don't even consider it satisfactory therapy. Uh, and in the clinic, we see it all the time. Patients who come in frustrated because they can't achieve good control, no matter how many times they check their sugars, no matter how many times they inject insulin. So what we're really after is something much, much bigger than that. What we're after is, how can we make somebody insulin free? Uh, how can we cause their beta cells to regrow? How can we make them feel like they're normal again? In the last uh, 10 years, there's been an explosion of research with type 1 diabetes, and we know so much more now than we did 10 years ago, and I think we're at an exponential part of our learning where we're learning a lot more about what causes this disease and then maybe potential things that we can prevent it or cure it. Funding is critical at Riley to allow us to do um, the types of projects that are more innovative and more likely to um, yield results but may not necessarily have the established track record. The advantage to this um, money that we get from the Riley Children's Foundation is that it allows us the flexibility to take some of those great ideas. And uh, when I wake up that morning and I say, this is a great idea, that afternoon I could start getting results. So I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at Riley Hospital in 1984. I'm a Riley kid, just like the kids that are in the hospital today. And um, so coming back here was, was kind of unique because I now work in a laboratory trying to cure the disease that um, I was told I had about 50 yards away from where, from where I now work. It's a disease I hate with a passion every day. That negative energy I've sort of spun into positive energy to do the work that I do, but this is a disease that can be devastating. It can take your life. You've got to feel that um, more so than many other diseases that um, there's a cure or advances that are going to be made that are going to help people um, who do get diabetes live better lives and that maybe one day, um, even in my lifetime, um, that there will be a cure. I hope that when Emerson is an adult and has children, that she can tell her kids about diabetes and they don't know what it is. They've never heard of it. That would, that would be a good thing.